Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be covering type aliases in Python typing. Uh, I previously covered this in another video, so I will link that one below. Um, I'm going to briefly recap what that video goes over, but I'm going to introduce a new concept, which is explicit type aliases. Um, but let's jump into it. OK, so what type aliases allow you to do is shorten verbose names in typing. So let's say, for the sake of discussion, we have some function here which takes in some argument which is extremely complicated. Let's say, you know, a bunch of ints, some stir, some other class, a whole bunch of stuff. And maybe, you know, you also return a list of these or something. I, I don't know. Um, but dealing with this big type annotation can be kind of annoying, and having to retype this over and over can be a little bit tedious. Um, so there is a concept in typing called aliases. And implicitly, you can make an alias just by making a global assignment at the module scope, as long as the value of the assignment is unambiguously a type, either a class or some generic um, unpacking here. Let's actually use capital tuple uh, just so it works on more versions. Um, because I still don't know if MyPy supports the new, the new alias or the new um, generics and aliases yet. Uh, didn't for a while. But anyway, yeah, it may be annoying to type this over and over and over. Uh, keyboard type, not <laughs> typing type. But uh, so you may alias this, like maybe this is a, a token position or something like that. And so you can just make an assignment at the module scope. And since this is a generic, it unambiguously refers to a type. And so the type checker recognizes this as an alias. Uh, I say implicitly and recognizes because there are many pos uh, many situations where the type checker doesn't recognize those. Uh, and that's why there is a new thing in Python 3.10 to explicitly indicate uh, an alias. And that is the type alias annotation. And if you're in Python 3.10, you can use from typing import type alias and annotate this as an explicit type alias like this. And so now the type checker doesn't have to guess as to whether this assignment here is an alias or not. Now, of course, in this case, it doesn't do anything because this is unambiguously a type. Uh, but there are some cases where it was necessary. One example of those is for forward annotations. So let's say we had you know, a class C down here, and we wanted to refer to a, um, you know, some, maybe this is generic, I don't know. We, we have to refer to it in some particular way in our alias. Um, C alias, of course, C is a short name, so it's not that's uh, difficult. But the type checker previously had no idea that this was meant to be an alias, uh, because it just looks like a string literal assignment. It doesn't know that this is a forward annotation. And so one of the uses of type alias was to force the type checker to say, oh, OK, I recognize this. This is supposed to be a type, uh, even though it's quoted. So it's a forward annotation. I did a video on forward annotations on that as well. Um, but yeah, now the, now the type checker can unambiguously know that this is a forward annotation. Um, there was, uh, oh, one other benefit to using this over implicit annotations is if you were to make a mistake. So if you had, if you had done something like this, um, maybe not with tuple, but maybe with some other generic type, uh, this will fail at runtime, uh, but not, at, not necessarily at typing time. I think it does actually fail at typing time here, but um, I guess, this is probably a better example. Uh, this will this will succeed at um, actually no that won't succeed either. I don't know, but the the, <laughs> the rationale is that uh, if you annotate this with type alias, the type checker can give you a better um, indication that it should be this type instead with brackets, and so uh, there are some situations where it improves that. Now, because this is new in Python 3.10, uh, and you may want to use this in older versions, what you can do is uh, install the typing extensions backport, which will be uh, pip install typing extensions. And typing extensions provides a backport of this. So if you have like, um, how would I do this? I would probably do. Uh, if sys.version info is greater than or equal to 310, then we can do from typing import type alias. Otherwise, from typing extensions import type alias. Uh, that way I can use it in you know, Python 3.9 and older if I, if I need to. 
Uh, you could also, another alternative would be to do from future import annotations. That way it stringifies all the annotations automatically. And you could do from typing import type checking. And you could do if type checking, uh, just force it to be a, a typing time only uh, import. And this will just be, this will just be a string. So it doesn't really matter that this isn't defined at runtime. Um, but yeah, that's that's type alias, why it was added, and why it may be useful in some cases. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.